we've been having problems with our water maker. And we used to be able to fudge things to make it work and not anymore. So we decided to be brave humans and take the sucker apart and see if we can look at the O-rings and the end caps and see if there's any damage. If there's not, then it's likely that the membrane is damaged. So we're going to find out. So seawater comes in, goes through the pre-filter, then it goes through the 5 micron filter and then the 25 micron filter, and then it goes into the membrane, which is that big white tube right there. We figured what's going to happen is I'll take it apart and Adrian will put it back together again because I'm good at taking things apart. I'm not good at putting things back together. There's always extra nuts and screws and washers <laughs> and shit. There's always extra washers. Like massive amount of washers. Like I forget to put all the washers in. Alright, so we already took this hose off of here. This is the out and if I'm not mistaken, this goes to the the water tank. This is a fresh no no. This is the fresh water out and it well it eventually does. It goes into here first. Yes, it goes and then in it there. Determined, and gets... It looks at the parts per million. Right. The, the total dissolved solids. That's what that does. And then if it's good then it goes yeah. Okay, but then this one that comes off of under here, that one. So it's seawater. It goes into the box also, and then it checks something. I don't know what it checks. Well, we measured the water coming out of there, and it was about 3,500 parts per million. So now this came from the 25 micron filter through the high pressure pump and into the membrane and now we're going to check and see how many parts per million that is. No, it's going to be, it should be 3,500. It's 3,460, 3,490, 3,500. Yeah, so that's just all salt water. Right. What? Okay, so we got the membrane out. Well, we got the tube out. And it's yeah. heavy as shit. And we'll do this, we can do this outside or on our kitchen table. Yeah. Look where you're going with it. It's heavy. Well, <clears throat> we're supposed to need a 5 16th Allen wrench to take that off. Okay, and this is a 3 16th. It says we need 5 16ths. Yeah, so the manual's a lying sack. Because it's three? Yeah. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, it's just perfectly. Take it off, baby. We're searching all over for like an hour trying to find a 5 16th. Yeah, well, the question is why don't we have a 5 16th? Well, that's one of the questions. The other question There is, are so many questions. Yeah, we've got a shit ton of Allen wrenches, as you all know. We but, do. But the 316, we've got a bunch of these, and yeah. no 516, and it takes for 316. Okay. It's very confusing. I really hope this works. The other one's down. Because I don't want to buy a new water maker. And truthfully, I don't want to buy a new membrane anyway, but we might have to. Push inward on the end plug and remove the thread ring from one end. Looks like something came out of Batman, one of Batman's tool belts. <laughs> remove the port retainer from each end. Okay. Number five, re remove the from each end. Okay. It's seriously. Mm. So sea recovery, aquas, or mini, you should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, these, your instructions are pretty pathetic. They, they are, there's like, you look at the numbers of the parts. The exploded and, view. The exploded view with the numbers of parts, and then it doesn't address where the parts are in anywhere in the manual. So the manual is pathetic. But, I mean, Tell okay. us what you really think, babe. Yeah, I might want to hold back. Let's see. Oh, that's what your needle nose pliers are for. It's like operation. <laughs> Okay, so now this has to come out. I don't know if this is doing it. Oh. Okay, now we can't pull it out until we do the same thing to the other side. Right. When I was a kid, I had a cassette recorder, and I wanted to take a part, you know, to learn how it works, which is like how all engineers get started. Um, I took it apart. I couldn't figure out how it worked, and I couldn't get back together, which is how non-engineers get started. People who are never going to be an engineer, that's when I determined. I don't know. I think if you wanted to be an engineer, you could totally do it. I seriously, I, I couldn't. I took it apart, and I, I could not get it back to life me, so I had a broken tape recorder. 
Aww. Yeah, very sad. That's why I'll take it apart and you can put it back together. Okay. So if I was writing the manual, which I did a lot of in my career, I would say slide each piece of the three segment ring toward the center of the tube rather than push it in. Because pushing it in goes like this, but you really want to slide it like that. Mmm. Mmm. You can probably just use your hand now. I know. It's going to need some more thread seal tape on it. Definitely. So then insert the socket head screws back in. And then use them to pull it out. Use These screws are used as a grip to remove the end plug. Okay. Do we lay it, we put it down. Oh, right. And pull okay. up. What do you think? Here, just put it on the mat. Yep. This is our new friend, Scott. Hi. We um, recruited him to come help us because we cannot get these end plugs out. Don't hurt yourself, babe. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. So oh, it's thing. peeing. It's peeing at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just water, I think. <laughs> Salt water. <laughs> I told you we needed vice grips on the boat, babe. So you always need vice grips on a boat. Oh, look at that. Eureka! Now, I have some really good lubricant to use on this if you don't have some. When you put this back in, these need to be lubed. Yeah, yeah so we have are some. They, are these the O-rings? Yeah. So we have to take them so out we, and inspect them. We want to them. inspect these O-rings because there's a chance they said it might, we might be having a problem because these O-rings are leaking. If they're sealing or not. And because then there's salt water getting back in there. That's what I'm hoping they find. I don't see any, but you certainly could take them out gently with something that won't cut it. Yeah. And get it over there, clean them off, re-lube them. Yeah. We have like Marlubes. You know, my yeah, yeah Marlubes. My stuff. question is that's the membrane. You should they were there. that was so hard to get out. If if they were leaking, it wouldn't have formed a good vacuum, right? Yeah, probably. probably. You can check O rings on both sides for sure. Okay, ready? Three, two, three. Oh, sorry, my bad. Let's see if we twist that little. Ready. We learned that you have to remove the membrane before you can remove the other end plug. That right there is twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> nope, shouldn't be. It was. Well, that's just a really weird size. Well, um, we can plug the numbers in and see if the Dow one is compatible. It isn't. Yeah. Totally well, proprietary. Well, so how do we know we'll, if we'll that needs to be cleaned? Yeah. How can you tell by looking at it if it needs to be cleaned? Well, one of the signs of you know, bad water is a membrane, a bad membrane. Yeah, yeah but, I, but say, how do you how know? You look at it and say, oh, look, it's all dirty yeah, in there. I don't know. Ready? Yep. Whoa. Oh, God. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we were able to take the membrane out. We took the end caps off. We took the O-rings off. We inspected the O-rings. We inspected the end caps. Um, everything looked to be fine. We cleaned everything. We lubed everything. We put it back together. Thank you. <laughs> we put it back together. And um, now we're just going to attempt to put the whole unit back together. And we're going to run it. And if it doesn't work, then we're going to follow the instructions on how to clean the membrane. Which we're hoping that we don't really have to do. As we're putting the finishing touches on putting our water maker back together, do you have any last thoughts before we turn it on? Uh, I say we. Just, oh. <laughs> I say we just get a lot of towels and hope for the best. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely gonna need a lot of towels. It didn't work. Okay, so we took the tube out from underneath the bed and the tube contains the membrane for the water maker. We cleaned the O-rings, we replaced them. Um, we checked the end caps for any kind of nicks or cracks and there weren't any. So the next thing we need to do is um, clean the membrane. We're gonna do a biological clean on it. We're gonna do a closed loop circuit. 
behind so, the behind the tostitos. So we need to take this hose off right here. Yep. And we need to put it in the bucket of right. solution. Okay, we've created our closed loop. We took this hose off of our C strainer. So this is the hose that goes from the C strainer to the low pressure pump. And from the C strainer, it pulls in from the seawater. So that is now going to pull everything from here. This is the brine water hose from the pump. So this is now going to flow back into this bucket. So this is going to be a closed loop. All the water is going to come out of here and it's going to go back into here. And then <laughs> we turned the um, we turned the high pressure valve all the way to off. So we're hoping that <laughs> no water is going to come out of that hose that would normally be diverted to the tank. Um, we're we also put, disconnected it. We disconnected it so that none of this chemical can get into our water tank. Um, nothing should come out of it, but we're going to get a little bucket in there in case some water does come out of it. So if water does come out of that... We'll just stop, stop it. And then what? I'll figure it out. Okay. We've measured six ounces... Carefully. ...of this solution. Don't inhale it. I'm not going to inhale it. And we've got five gallons of water. We're supposed to mix this until it's thoroughly dissolved. Yeah, so we're going to run this for an hour. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. We've been up since 4.30 and we're... <laughs> okay, note. Note to everybody who ever wants to do this. Don't start this process at 9.30 at night. Um, we started the process of cleaning the membrane at 9.30 and you have to run it for an hour. And then you need to, oh, thank you. Then you need to let it sit for four to six hours and then run it for 20 minutes. Um, then you gotta dump the water over. And uh, then you gotta fill the bucket with fresh water, run it for another 20 minutes, dump it, and repeat that process. And we didn't, like we didn't read it all the way through, so we didn't realize that whole letting it sit for four to six hours. So that's why we were up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> well, the four to six hours is optional. It is optional, but we're we're afraid that... Yeah, uh, if, it's brought, if you need to clean it, you need to clean it. Right, so we're just doing it. So here we are. I'll show you what's going on. All right, so we're done doing this 20-minute flush with fresh water. And now we're gonna take the uh, discharge hose and we're gonna hook it back up to the outlet. That thing leaks all our chips get wet. Jeff went outside to turn the hose on and um, we're gonna fill the bucket with five gallons and run it through. One more time. In case you're wondering, the reason that we had the water filter on the end of the hose is that you're not supposed to put chlorinated water um, into this system. So that's why. Okay. All right, crush fingers. We hooked up everything. I think we did it the right way. It's 5.45 in the morning, so I'm not sure, but I think we did. And um, the system is doing a back flush right now. And then we're going to turn it on and hope for the best. We're making water, but the saga continues. Watch future videos to find out what happens. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, give us a like, and share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching.